Good morning traders. Welcome to the TMT Stock Market Strategy video for Tuesday, October 11th. Hope everybody enjoyed the um, uh, holiday yesterday if you were not working. Uh, markets were open but were very, very quiet. Uh, markets rallied um, right out of the gate for the first 15 minutes and that was pretty much it for the day uh, based on the... Um, uh, debate on Sunday with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Um, I don't know what they were looking at, but I, uh, I for, sh for sure thought that Donald won that debate. But uh, and a lot of other people, there were actually polls that came out and said that he won the debate. But again, uh, not a political uh, video. Could care less about that as far as uh, who won the debate. But uh, nonetheless, we have two candidates that are neck and neck going back and forth here. Um, throwing mud at each other so uh, that's 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 not always a good uh, good sight to see obviously uh, who's going to be the next president of the United States but anyway the markets did like that uh, I do believe um, and I had to get, get a couple of uh, um, questions so what do you think about the uh, the presidential election and, and what the markets are going to do um, really it's not what I think it just uh, as an opinion I, I think the market sells off either way uh, if Hillary comes in uh, to office uh, there will be probably a knee-jerk reaction of market moving higher, but I, I think there'll be a Congress of uh, gridlock, nothing uh, actually going on, nothing going to move, uh, no um, production moving forward uh, as far as uh, anything getting done in Congress. Uh, so I think at one point the market would probably realize that and sell off. And then if Donald Trump gets into office, the usually knee-jerk reaction when you get a... Um, uh, a change in president uh, and party usually get a market sell off too as well uh, so I think at one point either way the markets will sell off and then you really need kinda need to digest it but uh, markets haven't gone anywhere for three months uh, it's actually been quite dismal as far as uh, day trading unless you're looking at certain you know certain things that you're uh, uh, finding but if you if you're indexing a lot of the stuff um, if you just looked at the S&P which I'll show you the markets really have gone nowhere all right what do we go from here and what are we looking at? Well, the dollar to me is going to be a big caveat here. Now, I have been mentioning for months I would not count the dollar out. Uh, many people, many analysts um, and pundits on, uh, on news medias, CNBC, Fox Business, what have you, uh, I hear them say, oh, the dollar is done, the dollar is done. I would not count the dollar out uh, when I was back up in this area here. Uh, even if we got down here to uh, 24 uh, in the UUP, which is the dollar ETF, I think the market would have rallied. Didn't even get quite that far, made a higher low from here. Symmetrical triangle breakout. Now the next uh, pivotal high is the 25.25 right here in this area where I have identified. And if we take that out, we'll probably challenge these highs here, these swing highs up, up, up in the back. Now what does that do to, uh, for us? Why do we care? Well, we need to care because... Um, Precious metals, gold, the whole commodity squadron uh, is going to get affected by the dollar and eventually U.S. equities. Right now, uh, no one cares about it, uh, but they will uh, when you see uh, the dollar start to continue to move higher. Now, the, um, the gold um, area of the commodity sector is um, getting hit. And yesterday we had a move higher. And I think, I think yesterday you could just discount yesterday. I don't, I don't believe that move. Um, and we really, we, we moved up and we went sideways all day and we sold into the close. Uh, so I don't think that was anything big on very, very low volume. Really, let's see what happens today going into the rest of the week. Uh, but we have gold down right now and uh, we have the dollar really making new highs, new intraday highs, uh, you know, for the day that is. And uh, we're trading on a DX of uh, 97.43. Uh, crude oil down about 28 cents, and crude oil was up on finance minutes of saying, oh, we're comfortable with $55, $60 oil by 2016. So oil is getting uh, jerked around uh, by comments from all these different parties. Uh, Saudis, the uh, Val uh, Russian president, um, uh, other different areas uh, of OPEC. Uh, so the oil is getting pushed around, but I do believe oil is going to be coming into some headwinds, and I do think 50, even 55 for that matter, uh, would probably cap uh, this market rally of 2015, uh, 2016, excuse me. So uh, there, are, I think to me there are a lot of headwinds to come, and if you are long, just be careful. Uh, right now, um, crude is not paying attention to what the dollar is doing, but eventually will. Crude is, uh, whatever crude goes higher, dollar would go lower, and vice versa. It is inversely correlated. Right now, the correlation is the same, but that does change, okay? Just keep that in mind. All right, so let's that's the dollar. Let's take a look at uh, GLD. And I... I comfortably would like to see GLD down to about 115 ish I think the next blowout to the downside is something that you want to pay attention to in the GC contract 
uh, and I think 1220 needs to hold in the GC contract uh, and GLD this area here needs to hold 115 if GLD does not hold the 115 then you're gonna get a bigger flush back way back down here from where we rallied back early February okay but this has to hold here if this holds this this area here this is area an area where I want to see a base building and then a breakout that's the area where I would like to buy we don't know yet but we also don't want to buy here catching a fallen knife okay that's the GLD next is going to be the GDX and it's a, it's a very similar fashion here we had um, uh, a low to high Fibonacci retracements which we met all the way back down we sold all the way back down here uh, so what I did was I made an, uh, another Fibonacci retracement area and right now that 76.8% retracement comes right on the top of this band of this um, support uh, this uh, supply and demand area here okay and this is something that I'm really looking for uh, to move into this zone now again if we can hold the 1920 ish area and we can see our momentum indicators start to roll back up from these downtrend lines uh, like I indicated back up here way back when in, in August um, then I think that we would get a decent buy-in all right but not until that happens guys okay we might even get a back test with a gap fill here if we rally and then I think eventually we would sell off one more time uh, I think it's too easy to go get long gold right now okay all right so here is the um, the S&P daily here's the and and remember I had put uh, I had I've had uh, uh, a, a, a bearish excuse me a pair of flag uh, lost my train of thought for a minute uh, but I changed that into a, into a pennant because the the flag was just a little too long but what I did do is I left this area here just to, for target areas just to see where um, if we did pop where this area would go to the upper trend line so uh, to, but this is a formation for you for a nice pennant for a breakout we tried to break out we did not and you can see what's happening here we're just coiling nothing is going on here at the moment so there's absolutely no price movement uh, so we want to see this market either break down or break back to the upside and remember we do have a very large bearish rising wedge from the fe February lows here okay so that's still intact it has not triggered remember it only triggers when you break the lower trend line here on a closing basis okay next is going to be the 60 minute just want to show you guys here what we have uh, we have gone nowhere you could see this 212 15 and 214 15 are very key and pivotal support areas if we lose that we go to 212 15 and if we do lose that uh, you know my targets right now is 210 okay so that's the projected target from this uh, breakdown we had um, earlier in the uh, last month next is the transports uh, doing quite well here they're holding up so if we do get a breakout um, I think it'll be difficult for the markets to sell off but I think we'll get one or two big sell-offs going into October and then once the election is closer I think we'll get uh, the, a really uh, a good trend for the rest of the year wh of what direction this market is headed right now there really is no direction we're just uh, sideways to, for the last uh, month and a half uh, actually three months if you want to really call um, um, if you looked at the spiders all right IWM same thing sideways guys no real direction here and last of the queue same thing all right so uh, pay attention to the VIX the VIX is at extreme lows uh, and also may I add uh, that the commitment of trader reports and as you know the speculators are, are so-called the dumb money in the report where the producers are smart money producers are actually uh, short gold at its highest and also may I add short crude oil uh, at right at these areas at these market tops when that does happen it's not a timing tool but when you see the commitment of trade reports at extremes and at, and at big rallies you have to be careful because then you get the dumb money that comes in and continues to buy thinking that this market or the market that you're looking at such as crude oil and gold is going to go higher so what you want to see is uh, come Friday is you want to see a reduction of um, of the short interest for the producers so they're thinking okay well uh, gold has gone back down to levels right now where I'm good to cover my shorts okay so that's really what we want to look for in, in gold and in crude but right now we have two high readings uh, for the producers which are, sh are short right now gold and crude oil okay hope that helps guys we'll see you tomorrow